Hi everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to post data in MySQL database by using Spring Boot Backend as well as Postman. So let's get started. First thing what you need to do is you need to just go to your browser and you need to search for Spring Initializer. You will be getting this first link over here, Spring Initializer. Just click it and here you need to add the dependencies as well as the name of your project and the versions. So I will go with Gradle Groovy that is fine, language is Java and let me just now change the name as spring pro something like that you can just give it to everywhere yeah you can just paste it and you can just change it here as well yeah this is totally up to your choice and jar is fine and java 17 is works for me so these are fine now so we will be using some dependencies over here so just click on add dependency and first thing we need to search for spring web just add it spring web and i will click again add dependency and next one is going to be the spring data jpa so it's going to be spring data jpa here we will be having and i will add the mysql driver as well mysql driver and final one is going to be lombok the reason why i'm adding lombok is because we don't want to like manually create the getters and setters or the constructors we can just use the annotations present inside lombok so these are basically the four differences that i'm adding so this is the entire stuff all right so once you are done creating all these you have to just click on generate so it will be getting downloaded in a form of a zip file so here you can see right spring pro so now let me just go to my downloads folder so here you can see it is in a form of a winrar zip file so just right click it and just click on extract files and just click on ok so it will be getting extracted over here itself yeah so here you can see this is the file we'll be having source and main.test so this is the .java file over here yeah so this is the file so now let me just open this particular folder as a project in IntelliJ. So for that just go to IntelliJ IDEA and after opening IntelliJ IDEA you need to go to file and you need to go to open and you need to go to downloads and here we will be having the Spring Pro, the Spring project ok. Just click on that and click on ok and just click on this window. So at first it will take some time to load so just be patient I think it will take some time for indexing as well as the gradle to build so just be patient at first. So here you can see it will be showing you updating index and importing Gradle. So Gradle build. So these two processes are really important and you need to like wait for some time until the both the process are getting completed. So here you can see now all the process have been now completed and there is no loading or anything like that. So first thing what we need to do is we will be just going to my main Java and here you can see this is my main application over here. So now we will be making some changes in application.properties. So for that where you need to go is you need to go to resources and here you will be having application.properties. Just double click it and here you will be having the application.properties. So first we will be adding our local URL of our MySQL database. So it's going to be spring dot data source dot URL equal to JDBC colon mysql colon slash slash localhost colon 3306 slash and next you need to specify your database name that is going to be present in your mysql workbench so i will just name it as new db and you need to specify colon 3306 because this is not like the random port number this is the port number where mysql workbench is running so be specific to that so once you are added your database work, you need to create this particular database in MySQL workbench otherwise it will throw you an error. So I will just go to my MySQL workbench and create this particular database new DB. And if I just now refresh it over here, I will be having the database created. So this is fine. And next thing we need to specify the username and password of your MySQL database. So let me just now copy this thing. So it's going to be spring dot data source dot username and I will specify the username which is root for me this may vary from person to person and again spring dot data source dot password so you need to specify your password let me specify mine so this is fine these are some of the credentials that we need to give over here so after this we will be using some connections or properties for our connection so it's going to be spring dot jpa dot show hyphen sql equal to true so this command is basically like used to display the SQL command in our console. 
So we, we, I told you like we will be creating a table at the end. So the creation of that particular table and its SQL command will be displayed at the console. So that's the reason why we are adding this particular property. And next thing are going to be some of the default properties. Okay, it's going to be spring dot jpa dot generate and hyphen ddl equal to true. Next one is going to be spring dot jpa dot hibernate dot ddl dot auto equal to update and final thing let me just now copy this and paste it dot properties dot hibernate dot dialect equal to org dot you'll be having hibernate dot dialect dot i s q l 8 dialect okay so here you have to be careful m is capital o is small s q l or caps 8 d is capital and dialect I so once you're done adding all the values in application dot properties you need to come to the folder where you have your main spring application okay so by default the name would be com dot it will be your project name okay so you need to just right click over here and we will be adding like four folders or directory so the names of the folders is going to be entity repository controller and service okay so it will sound confusing i will just create them first so it's going to be new and here we will be having an option called as package over here just click it so first i will be creating the entity folder okay just capital e type entity just hit enter okay so after that we'll be getting this entity so don't make any changes okay don't rewrite that particular thing okay so again after right clicking i will be going with package so what i meant was here we'll be having a dot okay so don't just remove that and next thing is going to be the repository yeah and next one is going to be controller and the service it's going to be the service so it's not necessary to have like this folder structure but it's always good to implement so it's more easy to read your code in companies generally they will have this way so it's always better to practice having separate folders for each purpose of your file so the final one is going to be our controller so it's going to be controller yeah so first we will be starting with the entity so entity basically will have the java file in which we will specify our table as well as its columns and its data members okay so just click on entity right click new you will be having this java class click that i will name the class name as student because i'm just going to like input student details as a demo purpose enter this class name you can enter whatever you want after that just click on class and hit enter so here we will be having the student class created for us so through this class we will be able to add properties and column names for our table that we are going to create in our mysql okay so just imagine this as a class representation of a table okay basically that's it so first let me add the column names okay after that i will go and annotating the particular main class so it's going to be i will have here three columns which is id mark and name so it's going to be um private have it as int id so this is going to be like the primary key the unique key yeah so for representing it as a primary key we will be having the id annotation okay id just hit enter and i will also add a column name okay so we can specify the column name manually as well by using the column annotation like if you want the default id to be the column name you can also have that i will just have this so just open bracket it have name and i will just give it as id that's it and for this id to be a auto incremented or auto generated value we can just have the generated value function okay yeah so these are some of the standard stuff that everyone uses for a particular unique id in the column so next one is going to be the mark and name so it's going to be private it's going to be of type int and it's mark yeah and same thing column is going to be the loan annotation column and name is going to be students mark like that and the final one is going to be the name private this is of type string string with capital s yes, and i'll put name 
and it will also have the column annotation okay column i will have the name equal to i'll just go with the standard name that's it yeah no this this is now fine so these are some of the columns that we will be having in our table so after doing all this we need to also add some main annotations to our student class okay so the first annotation is the entity so entity is like we will be referencing spring boot that this particular class corresponds to that particular table present in mysql db okay so that's what the entity annotation does it's important to have that and next we will be using the data annotation this is present inside lombok so whenever we are creating a class we need to have all those getters setters as well as so many things are there but by using this data annotation this will automatically create all the getters and setters for each and every data member for our class so always better to use lombok and this data annotation so after this we will be also having the table okay so this table annotation exactly similar to column annotation by through which we will be referencing our table name so this particular name that we will be specifying over here is going to be the table name in our mysql db so i will just have a name it as i will go with student underscore db something like that yeah so this is now fine so after this we can also add the constructors so it's going to be capital n i guess yeah the no org constructor so so same thing we also need to create a constructor and initialize the values so we need to have a empty constructor as well as a constructor with a data members value so these are some of the standard stuff so by using these annotations we can like bypass those things as they are automatically done by with the help of these annotations so it's going to be all all logs constructor okay yeah some of the standard things so now we are good with our entity class so after this we will be creating a repository interface so it is not a class it is an interface so which is also used to basically like reference to this particular entity so it is like this okay every entity of a table in spring boot will have a repository of its own through which we will be able to execute queries and other stuff okay so just imagine it as that way so just come to your repository folder now we are done with our student.java i will just close it okay just close this as well yeah and i'll just come to get repository right click new it's going to be of java class but it's going to be of type repository okay i will just name it as student repo okay it's also always good to have in camel case just hit enter and if you want to name this as student entity you can also do that okay just name it as student ent entity it's your total choice it will be more like readable and understandable if you have that way in case of like you're having more number of files since i'm having only one file i will just name it as student okay so that is good so now let me come to my repository and here you can see right this is an interface okay this is not a class so student repo first thing we need to have extends okay this is a keyword extends and after this we need to add the jpa repository which is like an inbuilt class of spring boot so it's going to be jpa capital j okay capital j we will be having the jpa repository over here the city enter so through this way we will be able to perform all the CRUD operations to our database or entity so just expand this okay yeah we will be having this greater than less than symbol and within that we need to specify our class name of our entity so my class name over here is student okay so you need to specify that first over here so it's going to be student you will be having here yeah student here it is okay you need to specify the class name and this will get automatically imported and a comma and here we need to specify the data type of the primary key of our student class so student class is over here and the data type of our primary key is of type integer okay so you need to specify the data type of the primary key so it's going to be obviously integers in 99 of the cases okay 99 percentage of cases so just specify the data type of the primary key it is integer okay so that's it now we are done with our repository and entity is also done repository is done so next thing we have only service and controller so what service basically does is that it allows us to perform the post save put fetch all the operations okay so i'll just go to service right click it and new and this time it's going to be a plain java class not any interface or something so i will just type it as student service always good to use camel case okay use camel case everywhere okay and i will just now hit enter so we'll be getting the service i will close the repository and in the service we will be able to access the entity through the repository variable okay 
So the repository object, we can't access an entity directly. Okay, so only with the help of the repo, we will be able to access the objects or data members or the functions that are present inside our entity student. I hope that made sense. So in the service, the first important thing is we need to annotate the service. Okay, so it's going to be add service annotation to reference it as a service class. So after this, we will be creating our reference variable or object of our repository. So as I told you earlier, we will be only able to access the student class details through the repository object okay with this help of the object of student repo so i will create that okay so it's going to be private the name is student student repo yeah so i will name it as the smallest okay student repo yeah this is a naming convention okay whenever you are creating a variable the first thing should be the class name itself and after that the variable name should be the, like the smaller letter of that particular class name itself so it's like a common naming convention used so we will be able to access only the values present in our main student class with the help of this variable or object okay also you have to annotate with this auto wired okay yeah so this is used for basically like dependency injection or referencing our repository variable over here so it's, it's you, you need to use this auto wired otherwise you will be getting an error okay so now we are done so next thing we will be creating a function for saving or posting the data okay because that is our main aim in this video okay we need to post and save data in the database so for that we will be creating a function so it's going to be public you need to create this create it as public okay because we will be using this function in our controller okay controller will be having a java class and we will be using that particular function over there so it's always good to have our function as public and the return type of this particular function is going to be of student okay student means this particular class okay this main entity class so it's going to be of type student and uh, next is the name of our function i will have it as save details you can name it as anything you want and the function is going to have only one parameter that parameter is going to be an object of the class student so what i meant by object is that is going to be like these things id mark and name so these are like data members and this particular parameter will have all these values as an object inside it so it's going to be student yeah student i will go with the same naming conversion like with a small yes after that yeah, student student so after this we will be returning it okay because since we have used student over here we have to return it return we'll be using the repo name as i told you for accessing that values or saving anything we'll be using the repo object or variable so it's going to be return student repo dot and here we'll be having so many functions okay so in that we'll be using the save so this basically saves our data in our table as simple as that save and inside that we will to pass our object okay student student this variable okay this variable over here so this student will have all the details like id mark and name in our object form and we are just saving it in the table simple so now we are done with our entity and the final thing that is left is our controller so the main purpose of controller is defining the path and the operation so here you can see right let me go to my postman so here you can see right we will be having so many operations post put fetch and delete there are so many operations and we will be also having this particular path or the root okay add student for post we will be having for put we will be having put delete will be having slash delete so we will specify all these details in the controller so just right click controller new we will be having the java class select it i will just name it as what is a student controller yeah simple controller like that class okay everything is class except repository okay and we'll be getting the student controller over here and we will begin by annotating the controller class with rest controller okay so this is to specify that this is a controller class so after that we will be creating a service variable okay so here in service okay in service we had an object of student repo exactly similar to that in our controller we will be having an object of the service class okay so service class name is student service okay so i will just go to my controller so it's going to be private student i think it's capital yes yeah student will be having the student service okay so we'll be creating a variable of our service okay student service i hope that made sense this one student service yeah and you can name it after that it's going to be the same thing the small yes student service yeah and we will also annotate with with auto wired exact same thing for referencing it yeah so we are done and after this we'll be creating another function so here the main 
route or the path for our post operation will be specified so as i told you right this particular path needs a function okay every path will have a function to its own so i'll just come here the function as i told you it's going to be public okay in most of the cases public and it's going to be of the type student okay student as usual the main entity and it's going to be i will have it as add details or post okay post details okay post details that's going to be the name and after that this will take an argument okay so this is this argument is going to be of type student okay same student okay same student everywhere student and the smallest student okay but we need to also add a particular annotation which is at request body okay so the reason is because we will be sending data over here okay we will be sending data from our postman so where is that this raw yeah so we'll be sending a json data from our postman and with the help of this request body that particular data will be fetched by the student object okay so once we are hitting that particular path this particular data will be fetched by this particular function okay so i will like add the path and it will make more sense after that so in this in this function we'll be having at post mapping so to reference that this particular function will handle the post operation in this class or controller so we need that post mapping so in general we will be using post mapping for post operations so this will take the past so i will go with add student okay so now i hope it will make more sense so this add student will come over here okay will come over here after this port number slash that particular add student will be coming here so when i send the data as a request this particular data will be then caught by this particular request body of student okay then this student will have basically these details so i hope now it will be clear for you so in this function exact same thing we have to return it okay so it's going to be return and we'll be using this service student service so it's going to be student service dot and with the help of the student service variable we will be accessing this particular function inside our student service you know this function right save details we created earlier so with the help of this variable that we have created in our controller we will be able to access this particular save details function okay so it will be dot save details within that we will be pass the student variable okay so that's the code so now let me explain you how this works in a simple term okay so i'll just close these things only the main thing is going to be controller and the service okay rest are just standard stuff so i'll go to my postman so i'll just explain it in a demo way after that i will run and show you so we'll be adding the local host the student the path after that we will like have a json data and whenever we hit send this particular path slash student will be hit okay so after hitting that it will come over here this path will be like it will check whether we are having this add student path so this particular path that we have sent in postman matches with this path so it will come over here and we are having the request body annotation with the student object okay so this data that we have sent over here will be now present inside the student variable this variable with the help of this request body annotation so after this this student variable will be having these values it will come over here here you can see it's student service dot save details student so basically we are passing all this data to the save details function which is present inside our service okay so now i will go to my service service this particular save details function so i'll go here the save details function is also having a parameter of student okay so now this student will be referenced to as this student over here okay it's like function calls basically so what happens is that this data will now come to the function save details present inside our service from the controller so it's like that it it's from the postman data to our controller function and from the controller function it goes to our service function and in the service function we are just saving it with the help of dot save through our repo like the repository variable that we have created earlier so because of this dot save it gets then saved in our mysql workbench or database table so this is the entire workflow okay so this is how it will work so now let me just run and show you this program okay just come to this uh, spring pro application that is the main file if you aren't having this run thing just right click it and you have to just click on run project and uh, if you are aren't having this edit configurations i will just open it so yeah this is my edit configuration here you to specify the java the main thing and here you to specify the working directory so these are the standard stuff and i will just now close it
and now in my database okay so this is my um database i will go to tables i'm having only my table so i'm not having the table any table named as student so here in entity right you have specified the table name to be as student db so if this program runs successfully we need to get the student db automatically created over here and after that we will be sending some data from our postman so i will just now run the code i hope it works a lot of effort into it and i don't want to get any errors right now so i will run it so after some time you will be getting some logs like this and if you get this final thing as spring application started so which means that there aren't any errors and here you can see right we will be getting some sql commands over here as well so here you can see right uh, create table student db so if i just now go to my mysql workbench and if i just now refresh it so here you can see that i will be having the student db over here so if i just now go to my select asterisk from i will just run student and i will go with underscore db and if i just now run it we will be having three columns which is going to be of type id st mark and name so here you can see right where is that yeah this particular name that i have specified over here will be directly coming to the column name as simple as that and another important thing you need to note here is that the port number on which your spring boot application is running so if i just now come here so here you can see right our spring boot has now started on port 8080 so this is like the default port so now let's see what happens when we some post data from our postman because that's our aim over here we need to save data currently our table is empty so for that this is the port okay so just copy this 8080 so this is like a default port so i will just come to my postman and here we need to change this port to 8080 okay important thing i will say you the important thing what we need to do so it's going to be localhost colon 8080 and here we are going to do post data so just click here the operation and change it to post really important thing many people won't do that and after that you need to come to body and it will be none at default i guess body none you need to go to raw after that and you need to have like this okay the format i'm inserting here only name and mark values because my id is auto generated as i told you right my id value is auto generated because of this generated value annotation so that's the reason why i'm not referencing id over here i'm having only name and work values sent as a request body so you need to have raw have name within double quotes hello within double quotes mark key within double quotes and since 100 is of type int no need double quotes to that okay be careful there as well after that here also important thing you need to have this type as json okay you need to change this to json i think it will be text by default if you put text it will or it will give an error so i have it as json another important thing and i think yeah that's it. these are the important things operation and you need to change the path as well so the path that we have specified in our controller that is controller yeah student controller this particular path should come over here you need to be careful with the cases as well so i will just change it to some meaningful name okay i will just put not meaningful hello hi something like that like this and i will go with thousand as the mark some random thing if i just now send it so it's sending request yeah so we have got the result over here so uh, we have got the result as a response because we are like returning it okay we here you can see that we have returned that particular thing and we have got this thing and if i just now go to my mysql table and run it so here you can see right i've got the value one which is auto generated i'm not sending id over here and the name and mark are coming and in case what if you want some other response okay you don't want the json to be appearing over here you can just change it by going to your controller you can just remove this return you need to just change this as string because we'll be returning a string text okay and i will come over here i will just return something as posted so this will work fine if you don't have any errors okay i'm just doing it since i'm not having any errors but in case of like company or a much more standard way we should never do this one okay never do never directly return a string or variable okay i'm just showing it for a demo purpose so like just to know how this basically works why we are adding the class name over here so that's the reason why i'm doing this so i'll just now rerun it for rerunning it just click this button okay so it'll restart again yeah so here you can see that it's restarting yeah so my application has now restarted so i will go to my postman again and this time we won't be getting the json over here rather than that we will be getting this 
particular posted text appearing in our response area. So I will just now move this and I will just change it to world or something. I'll just put world some random name and I will give the mark as triple one. And if I send it now, so here you can see that I'm getting that particular text over here. So that's the purpose. It's not necessary that you need to have that. And here you can see that this is how the insert operation works. Insert into student, the values like that. Yeah. So that's the SQL, like the query for what the operation that is being currently performed, the post operation. So if I just now go to my MySQL DB and run this command again. So we'll be having the value, the triple one and the world that I sent over here. So you can have a string over here or you can just leave the normal way how it was earlier. The normal way is fine, I guess. So this is how you post data in MySQL database by using Spring Boot and Postman. So I will be also doing many other post, put, get, delete, minimum, maximum, auto increment, everything. So I have also done Node.js, React.js, as well as uh, CRUD operations in MySQL, as well as MongoDB by using Node.js. So you can also check them. It's in the playlist of my channel. As well, I have also done tutorials in C, C++, Java, Python. So do check other videos of my channel and playlist. Thanks for watching.